Okay, so hi everyone. Today's class is going to be on Lewy body dementia. I've uploaded the notes for this class on Neuraxis Pro, so you can go ahead and access my notes over there. I've put the link in the description. So let's go into the class. So Lewy body dementia comes under a group of disorders known as alpha synucleopathies. So the other alpha synucleopathy you should know is multiple system atrophy. Multiple system atrophy. So how is Lewy body dementia different, different from the dementia that comes in Parkinson's disease? So when are the dementia and the neuropsychiatric syndrome arises along with the Parkinson's disease, that time it is Lewy body dementia. But when you have a patient with Parkinson's disease for several years, okay, so the patient's a known case of Parkinson's disease for several years and then he or she is going to develop a dementia along with neuropsychiatric syndrome, that time it is Parkinson's disease dementia. So it's very important that you have to differentiate both. So whenever the dementia and the neuropsychiatric syndrome either precede or arise along with the Parkinson's disease, it is known as Lewy body dementia. But in a patient who is a known case of Parkinson's disease for several years, a long lasting or long standing Parkinson's disease and then he or she is developing dementia and neuropsychiatric features, that time it is Parkinson's disease dementia. Okay, now coming to the neuropathology. So as the name suggests, it is characterized by the presence of Lewy body. So this is nothing but intraneuronal cytoplasmic inclusions that stain positively for periodic acid shift and are now identified with antibodies against the presynaptic protein synuclein. That's why it is also known as an alpha synucleinopathy. So this synuclein, uh, these synuclein uh, bodies or these Lewy bodies are not present only in the substantia nigra. They are present throughout the brain. So they are present in the spinal cord, the brain stem, the amygdala, cingulate gyrus and eventually the neocortex. So remember that even in Parkinson's disease dementia, you are going to have these Lewy bodies. But in Parkinson's disease dementia, the Lewy bodies are restricted or present only in the brain stem. Whereas in Lewy body dementia, they are present more widely. They are more widely spread. So in the spinal cord, the Lewy bodies are predominantly going to be in the interomediolateral cell column and to some degree in the Onuf's nucleus. And remember there are three stages of ascension. So the Lewy bodies are in initially going to be present in the brainstem. The next stage is going to be transitional limbic and finally the last stage is going to be diffuse neocortical. But even before affecting the brainstem, remember that these Lewy bodies are going to initially present in the entric nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. From the entric nervous system, it ascends into the brainstem, then into the limbic cortex and finally diffuse neocortical involvement. And remember the staging for Lewy bodies is known as Brach staging. It's known as Brach staging. This is a very, very important MCQ question. Okay, so this is a picture of the Lewy body. And remember that the only neurotransmitter defect is the predominant neurotransmitter defect is going to be in dopamine that is the substantia nigra but that is not the only neurotransmitter that is involved remember you're going to have a profound cholinergic deficit you're going to have a profound cholinergic deficit in Lewy body dementia because of involvement of your basal forebrain and pedunculopontine nucleus so that is why the drug of choice the drug of choice for Lewy body dementia is going to be your acetylcholinesterase inhibitors so your acetylcholinesterase inhibitors are the predominant drugs or the drug of choice that is used for Lewy body dementia because there is going to be a profound cholinergic deficit. And to some degree there is going to be adrenergic deficits because of involvement of the locus ceruleus. So this is about the neuropathology. Now coming to the epidemiology. So remember important MCQ question. The second most common cause of dementia is Lewy body dementia. And males are involved more than female patients and the average age of onset is going to be 72.5 years and the prognosis is poor compared to Alzheimer's disease. Patients are going to have a shorter survival compared to Alzheimer's disease. Now coming to the clinical features. So the cardinal clinical manifestations of Lewy body dementia. So obviously it's going to be a dementia. Then you're going to have Parkinson's disease. And then you're going to have a neuropsychiatric syndrome characterized by hallucinations and delusions. Hallucinations and delusions. And very, very important for the exam, 
patient's going to have a fluctuating cognitive function or a fluctuating sensorium that's very very important next patient is going to have rem sleep disorders rem sleep behavioral disorders okay so rem sleep behavioral disorders can actually precede lewy body dementia by several years and to some degree the patient will also have autonomic dysfunction so these are the cardinal clinical features of lewy body dementia but what is the sequence of appearance so first is going to be your rem sleep behavior disorder so as i mentioned earlier your rbd is going to precede lewy body dementia by several years sometimes even 70 years before the onset of dementia next the patient is going to develop dementia and shortly after the dementia appears the patient is going to develop parkinsonism and hallucinations so there's something which is known as prodromal lewy body dementia okay so the patients will have certain clinical features several years before the onset of lewy body dementia so you should remember very very importantly anosmia so anosmia is going to precede lewy body dementia by several years and like we discussed above your rbd rem sleep behavioral disorder and to some degree autonomic dysfunction so don't forget anosmia and rbd are going to precede your lewy body dementia by several years now coming to parkinsonism so the parkinsonism unlike in idiopathic parkinsonism is going to be symmetrical action tremor is going to be predominant more common than resting tremor and the patient is going to have a predominant gait difficulty impaired facial expression and rigidity so now coming to the cognitive decline so very very important the patient is going to have a fluctuating sensorium or a fluctuating cognitive function so sometimes we might even mistake the patient to be having delirium but the patient won't be having any provoking cause so the initial presentation might be like a delirium and remember that the patients are highly sensitive to metabolic perturbations and patients are going to have a relatively preserved episodic memory with severe visuo spatial and executive deficits and rarely patient can present as a rapidly progressive dementia so over here don't forget this point it's very very important for the exam patients going to have a fluctuating sensorium or a fluctuating cognitive function next the patients are going to have hallucinations so hallucinations are going to be detailed vivid images detailed vivid images of people and animals usually children and insects and they are more common commonly present in the evening next very very important patients are going to have rem sleep behavior disorder so we discussed about this early it's going to precede the dementia by several years and patients are going to have loss of normal rem sleep with atonia and patients who have lewy body dementia patients who have rbd are very likely to be a male patient they are very likely to have earlier parkinsonism and earlier onset of your neuropsychiatric syndrome next another important clinical feature is patients have neuroleptic sensitivity they are very very sensitive to your antipsychotic drugs this is very common it's seen in 80 percentage of the patients and around 50 percentage of the patients will have a severe reaction to your antipsychotic drugs and the patient will also have features of autonomic dysfunction like orthostatic hypotension urinary incontinence constipation erectile dysfunction so this is very important to differentiate from multiple system atrophy so remember the autonomic dysfunction is going to be very predominant in multiple system atrophy so how are you going to differentiate this from the autonomic dysfunction in lewy body dementia so in multiple system atrophy the patient is going to have recurrent recurrent severe disabling syncope severe postural hypertension okay so patient is going to have recurrent severe disabling syncope patients also going to have laryngeal spasms patients also going to be having laryngeal spasms and next the patient is going to have anterocolis anterocolis so these are the features that tell us the diagnosis is more in favor of multi system multiple system atrophy which is also in an alpha synucleinopathy next yes patients very commonly are going to have delusions it's seen in 70% of patients and usually these delus delusions are of misidentification syndromes or reduplicative paramnesia okay so this is about the clinical features now let's go into the diagnosis so in mri brain you're going to have a preserved hippocampal volume this is an important question so patients are going to have a preserved hippocampal volume with less significant global atrophy and also involvement of your posterior posterior mesopontine region and very very important on your fdg pet you're going to have a predominant parieto 
Pareto occipital hypometabolism. Pareto occipital hypometabolism. And predominantly it's going to be an occipital hypometabolism. But however, there's going to be relative preservation of the posterior cingulate metabolism. This is known as a cingulate island sign. It's very, very important MCQ. And it has a very high specificity for diagnosing Lewy body dementia. So let's look at the FTG pet of this patient. So you can see there is occipital. So down here you can see there is occipital hypometabolism with relative preservation of the posterior singular cortex. So the metabolism in the posterior singular cortex seems to be normal. Whereas there is occipital hypometabolism. So this is known as your cingulate cingulate island sign which is highly specific of highly specific for diagnosing Lewy body dementia. So this is a zoom picture. So you can see the occipital hypometabolism and over here the preserved metabolism the cingulate posterior cingulate cortex that is your cingulate island. Okay, if you take a dopamine transport scan, you're going to see decreased nigrostriatal uptake, especially in the putamen. And very, very important MCQ for the exams. When you take a myocardial iodine-131 MIBG scan, you're going to see cardiac postganglionic sympathetic denervation. This is very, very important MCQ. Okay, now coming to the treatment. So as we discussed earlier, we're going to have a profound cholinergic deficit in Lewy body dementia. So the drug of choice for dementia is going to be your acetylcholinesterase uh, inhibitors. They not only help with the cognitive dysfunction, they also help with your neuropsychiatric features. Okay, and coming to the treatment of Parkinsonism, it is yes, it is L-dopa responsive. Even though it is less compared to Parkinson's disease, it is L-dopa responsive. But you have to be careful while adding L-dopa for these patients because they can worsen your psychiatric symptoms. So it's very important that you start at a low dose and slowly increase the dose. And slowly increase the dose. And avoid dopamine agonists. They are going to worsen your psychiatric features. They are going to worsen your psychiatric features. Now coming to treatment of neuropsychiatric features. For depression and anxiety, you are going to use SSRIs. And remember that your anti- cholinesterase inhibitors are also going to help not only with your cognitive decline, they are also going to help with your neuropsychiatric features. And if there is a scenario where you have to use antipsychotics, remember avoid antipsychotics as much as possible because uh, there is neuro increased neuroleptic sensitivity in Lewy body dementia. But if there is a scenario where you have to use it, you can prefer quietiapin or clozapine. And coming to autonomic symptoms, you can use midodrine or fludrocortisone for postural hypertension and phosphodiesterase inhibitors for erectile dysfunction. And for your REM sleep behavioral disorders, you can use melatonin and second line drug over here is going to be clonazepam. Okay, so I think I've covered most of the important points. Thank you.